ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Engine Shed. Uh, my apologies for being absent on uh, YouTube for a while. Um, just got back from taking a much earned holiday. So it was nice to get away from the layout and just recharge the batteries a bit. So I think today I thought I'd better upload and uh, get on with the video that I promised a long time ago, which was how to make roots. And additionally, today I'm also going to be discussing about how to program a Helgen turntable with the ESU ECOS. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But um, as I mentioned in the previous video, it's always a good idea to name things like your accessories, whether it be your points, your lights, whatever. That way you can understand and make sure that you're selecting the correct accessory when you're programming a route. So <clears throat> to program a route, it's really simple. What you want to do is make sure you select a blank page or a new page so your routes are separate from your... Um, so you're just your regular accessories. So you can see here I've got my regular accessories and on this page I've got all my routes and on this page I've got another page for another separate set of routes for the uh, recently cleaned up and finished Heritage Works area. You can see just there in the in the foreground, background I should say. Um, and just ignore the crap on the bottom here, that's the TMD. Um, that's very so shortly going to be completed. I'm just waiting on a replacement accessory decoder to arrive um, Once I get that then I'll be able to finish laying the track here and wire it all up and it'll be done. That's it. That's the only thing left um, But anyway, we'll talk about that in just a minute <coughs> or in another video probably would be better <coughs> oh, Excuse me, right so program a route. We're going to select an empty page Same as before you want to select a little spanner icon you get your three, you get your symbols down the bottom here. The only ones that really apply to us are these two, this one here and this one here. So by this point, you should have already gone through and programmed all of your accessories. So there's no real need for me to show you how to do that again. So all you need to do is push this. You'll get your grid show up. Right, lucky Dora. So this is where it gets a bit confusing. Once you do that, the grid disappears. Now it's not because something's gone wrong. You need to go through and select all the accessories you need. So in this case, what I'm going to do is program a route. I'll quickly show you that fires this point, this point, these two points, all the way through to the turntable bridge so that we can effectively take a locomotive that's maybe being stabled over there where that class 60 is, bring it all the way over, put it on the bridge of the turntable, rotate it and then move it on somewhere else. So that's the benefit of using a route. It's a one button thing and it'll fire all the points and accessories that you need for that action to happen. Okay, so once we've done this, it's a simple case of going through and selecting your points. Now, as I said before, it's very important that you make sure you name all your points so you know which points you need to select. It's also a good idea to go around before you select all these points and check manually that they are thrown or closed the correct way. Now this is where a handheld unit comes in really handy because you can walk around and you can actually fire the points and inspect to make sure there's nothing going wrong or there's no chance of a train derailing. So just keep that in mind. Just check your points before you select them into a route to make sure that they're fired the correct way. And if that's all good and everything's okay, you're set to go. Okay, so in this case, what I need to select is the following points. So I know I need yard one, I need yard two, and I've already preset me most of these points. I might just check them real quickly again. Yes, so all of these points are already set and ready to go. <clears throat> so I've got yard one, yard two, I need yard six, and yard seven. I'll just quickly throw that one back. Um, and I think that's just about it. And of course, and I'll get to the turntable in just a bit, I promise. We'll just make sure that the turntable bridge is in the correct position and make sure it's in position one. And then we're done. <coughs> and I forgot to name the route. Now this is the other thing you need to do. You go to properties. This is where you name your route. Now, as I mentioned in the last video about programming accessories, you really need to be careful about how you program or name these particular routes and accessories. When you're dealing with something like a handheld unit, like what I have here, you want to keep the names concise and simple because you're dealing with fairly limited screen real estate, as you can see. So big names are not really gonna to look too great on a little screen like that. 
So just try and keep it simple, abbreviated if you can, but it's entirely up to you. If you don't use a handheld, it's nothing to worry about. So in my case, I'm just going to quick rename this. Um, <clears throat> let's call it Yard 7. Yard 7 to Turntable Position 1. Okay, so that's just an example. That's just my naming convention. If you have something similar to that, use it. It doesn't really matter. Um, it really depends on what you want to do. So now we've got the name. I'm just going to clear all the other lines and make sure there's only one line. You've got three lines here, so you could really name it whatever you want within reason. But as I said, just keep it simple and um, develop a naming convention that you're comfortable with using and you understand and then you've got nothing to worry about. And that's it. That's how simple it is to program a route. You can see it's already set. So if I go back to page six where I've got all my other routes set and you can see I've already programmed this route. Say so I want to change this particular route to the yard six, which is the siding right opposite that. So I'm going to quickly change that too. And you can see every time you change the route, particularly if there's a dependent point, um, the new route will be highlighted green with a tick and the old route will be closed, meaning that it's not possible or there's no clear path. So that's a nice feature. I like that about the ECOS. Right now, this is where the fun stuff begins. We're going to talk about the Elgin turntable. So the Helton turntable is a bit of an oddity because it comes with its own little DCC box and I'll quickly show you what I'm talking about. So you can see this little blue box. This is standard with the Helton turntable. And you can see it's just been positioned to track one. Now, there are plenty of videos on YouTube about how to program track positions and whatnot on the Helton turntable, so I'm not going to go into that. It's just a bit redundant in my opinion but if there is any interest please don't hesitate to message me I can always do a video on it later on if there's enough interest in it um, <clears throat> so the DCC uh, turntable by Helgen actually comes with an accessory decoder and that's the blue box you just saw in the video before so the issue has the facility on board to actually program a turntable which is this little icon here now we don't need to use that because it doesn't actually work it only works with a Marklin decoder, Marklin turntable or something like that, I think. So you don't need it. So all I've done is treated it just like a point or an accessory on its own right. Now, where it gets interesting is the address. Now, the address for the Helgen turntable, the default address of the Helgen turntable is the address 225. Now, if you use that address 225, and you activate that address 225, the, tel the turntable will position itself to its default position, which is track position one, okay? So when you position all your tracks and you program your bridge, you get track position one. And if I go, go set, track position two, go set, you can see the turntable's now moving to the second position, which is the middle track there where that little B1 is sitting. Okay, so that's just an example of that. When it comes to controlling it through the ECOS, it's just a simple case of figuring out the default address and re um, trying to think of the word, corresponding that to the default track position, which is track position one. And if you've got other track positions, track position two, all the way to track position ten, all you need to do is take the track position that you're using. So track position two is one more. Than the default address. A track position 2 would be address 226, track position 3 would be address 227, and so on and so on and so on. And that's all you need to do. That's how simple it is to program one of these things, and it's really easy to control. All I've done with the ECOS is I've used a function with track, and in doing that, what I'm able to actually achieve is you can see I've got a little diagram of the siding here. This is the TMD Heritage Works, and that's the turntable area. And at the end of the track, instead of having cutoffs, I've got three functions. Track position one, track position two, track position three. So you've got your bases covered either way. It works. It's a nice way of just being able to control it with the remote, whether you, you know, without using the blue box. So 
I found it works, but by all means, if you do have one of these Elgin turntables, give it a go for yourself, see how you go. Um, it should work with any DCC controller, I'm fairly certain. Of, my understanding is that that is the case. Just um, take note of your addresses. As I said, the 225 address is the default address for the Helgen turntable, so just try and avoid programming any points or any other accessories to that address, otherwise you're going to have the turntable going berserk while you're trying to turn on the light or switch a point, whatever it may be. Alright, so hopefully that's been informative for all of you viewing. Um, I figure now what we'll do is I'll show you a video of the actual unit at work. So I'll just position the camera here. Okay, so we've set our roots now. It's just going to be a case of actually using them. So what I'm going to try and do right now is I'm just going to quickly update the panels on the ESU handheld and once we're done and then <coughs> we're set to go okay so I've updated the panels on my ESU handheld now what I want to do is I'm going to move the green arrow so the, so the LNER V2 the Gresley green arrow that's a lovely little model um, I recommend that if you can find an old model of that it's still a cracking little model so I've just got to go through and find it now. There it is. So four 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 seven seven one. Right. Now we've got the address. We've just got to make sure it's called up. Yes, it's called up. Then we can go to our switch. I'm sorry if it's not in focus, but it really shouldn't matter. You should be able to see the general idea of it anyway. So we need to switch this to Heritage Works 2. Okay. So we get a clear road. Okay, now we can reverse. Dirty track, what a surprise. <laughs> One thing I wish Barkman would do with these nice models is put pickups in the tenders because it would make the running of them so much better. But anyway, there we go, she's moving. Let's give it a bit more speed so it does a stall. It's also important to note that these points are electrofog, so it makes a hell of a difference when you're using models from Barkman especially. All right, we'll just stop it there. And same again, because all the, pro all the points and routes are set, we don't need to worry about anything. So we're just going to blow mains a turntable. Give it a bit of speed. Slow it right down, and as before, we do again. Let's change hands. We can just rotate, and if you just select track one, it'll do a 180 on the turntable. So that's how easy it is. Roots and accessory decoders, points, turntables, you name it. Another advantage of having an ECOS is it has the facility on board for it to actually be able to control all of these things simultaneously and the interface in the ECOS is very good for this sort of thing. But it just highlights the power of DCC and how versatile it is. So I'm very happy with the results of that. So hopefully this, this has been informative for you. If you do have any problems, you're more than welcome to leave me a message in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Um, I will take this brief moment just to say thank you to all my subscribers. Um, we're now at 33 subscribers or something like that I last checked and well over 1500 views on the channel. 
which is quite remarkable considering that I've only put like six videos up online so I thank everybody for subscribing and viewing um, if there is anything in particular you want me to check out <coughs> do the track again just be sure to leave me a message um, things that are going to be happening with the channel in the very near future I'll be launching a Facebook page where I can leave things like um, interesting documents where I relate to KD, DCC, whatever um, that'll be available to my subscribers um, eventually I'll also be launching a Patreon page so that you guys if you wish can support me in uh, making these videos it would really help me along particularly in purchasing some of the more expensive stuff like uh, things maybe like an ESU lock programmer where I can show you how to do DCC sound programming and function mapping so we'll talk about that in another video but the next video I think will be coming up I'll just quickly show you you can see over there recently acquired a 3d printer so I'll talk about that in another video but that's something to look forward to but anyway um, that's all I have for you today Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. For, the, for most of you, you know the deal. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a dislike if you really want. All your feedback is appreciated. Um, so, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you in the next one. Happy model railroading.